<laughs> yeah, that was actually really cool. That was <laughs> sick. What's up guys, it's Eric from Varus Engineering and we got another install on our Mark V Toyota Super today. It is our brake cooling kit. You see a brake duct right here. This is our carbon brake duct of the brake cooling kit. Basically what this kit does is force feed airflow to the center of the rotor, which then expels hot air out, which is the natural tendency of the rotor to do so. And this basically just forces airflow in that direction, cool airflow from the front actually from this front duct area that's actually designed um, from the factory. And then we just take that in fender liner and, uh, and direct that directly into the center of the rotor. Now, by doing so, you're gonna help your brakes last a little bit longer and maybe cool it down to the point where a different pad compound may work a little better for you. Um, really, that depends on your specific setup. So do your due diligence and see if this is um, good for you or not. This is one of the coolest carbon parts we've made to date. It is our pancake duct for the fender liner. Uh, it basically captures the air right here, keeps a constant cross-sectional area, and then puts um, the airflow out into an orange silicone hose, which then goes to the backing plate. Uh, that backing plate then forces the airflow through the rotor, like I said earlier. Install is very simple overall. If you change your brakes or your rotors, you can basically do this install very quickly and easily. Um, I'm gonna, before we do the install, I'm gonna go over the kit components, and then I'm also gonna discuss the tools you need, but overall, it's like a brake um, pad change or a brake rotor change, and uh, then you'll have this installed on your car. Let's get to it. As far as kit components, I'm showing only one half of the kit because the other half is on our car already. So we have our backing plate. This is a stainless backing plate with a carbon duct. We have hose clamps for the two and a half inch orange silicone hose. And then we have our carbon pancake duct. And that is all that is included in the kit. Obviously this is only half, but it gives you an idea of what you'll see in your kit. Tools required for this install. We have a ratchet right there. E16 uh, socket. This is an eight millimeter on a hand ratchet, I guess you can call it. Three inch extension, six millimeter socket. Um, sorry, six millimeter Allen wrench or socket. This is a 10 millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket. Impact if you want it, um, but the ratchet should be fine. And then a 19 millimeter for us to take off the front wheel. I also have a pair of side cuts or dykes to cut the zip ties. All right, so I've already removed the rotor from the car. That is removed with a six millimeter Allen wrench that we removed previously on a socket. Um, not too tight there, at least on our car, um, but I've already had it off once, so that helps probably. The caliper comes off with two E16. Looks like that two e16 bolts i basically held the caliper up as i undid the two bolts slid the rotor off and then now it's installed loosely with just the top bolt you can now see the backing plate clearly we're going to take a uh, i believe it looks like a 12 millimeter 12 millimeter socket we're going to zip those four bolts off and then we'll install our backing plate the other location that you may notice, this is the through duct from the factory, which goes directly to the front bumper, high pressure air, cool air. So basically it is shoving cool air towards the, towards the rotor um, from the factory. And basically what we're doing is actually force feeding that air into the center of the rotor instead of kind of just blowing it that direction. Um, we found through CFD that, that this air does get interrupted um, a bit. So uh, with our cooling ducts, you're going to see an increase in, in cooling capacity for the rotor itself. We're going to get an eight millimeter socket, it looks like, and remove this, this, and this. Um, but before we remove this, I'm actually going to take a razor blade and we're going to cut this little protrusion off. This protrudes out. See, um, we're going to cut that off real quick. All right, so basically I just got a razor blade 
And obviously you can use something like a Dremel as well. Um, might make it easier. Um, I'm not terribly worried about the cut. We just need it to be flush with the fender liner. Um, so I'm just gonna do my best job of doing that. Yep, that's pretty nice. Um, and then we're basically gonna remove these and that one. And then we can install the carbon duct. Bolts have been removed, so now I'm going to install the duct like so. We're gonna start with the two bolts on the front um, and then we'll, we'll tighten the last rear one. So something like this. Just the factory bolts, nothing crazy here. Um, they're very coarse thread. They go into like plastic push pin type ordeals. Um, so don't go crazy with torque. Uh, I'm just going to basically as tight as I can go by hand. And then that should be plenty. And as you can see, the carbon duct seals up really nice to the fender liner and conforms to the fender really well. So I'm gonna throw that on there and then I'm gonna slide this on there. Hopefully this goes on there pretty nicely. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you guys. None of this is gonna be fun. It's all really, really tight in here. Um, and the hoses go on pretty tightly to the carbon as well as the backing plate. So none of it's really gonna be fun. Once I got the camera out of the way, it wasn't as bad. Um, you could also probably install the rubber hose or silicone hose when the duct is off and that it might actually help you out as well. So now we're gonna tuck this back here like so and install the backing plate real quick. Backing plate, uh, the carbon duct goes towards the car. Um, we give you a left and a right, which makes sense, right? So basically that is how it will install. Um, we just reuse the OEM hardware real quick. And then we will connect the uh, silicon hose to the carbon duct, which is riveted on. And um, overall the install is basically done. We just install in reverse order. Uh, torque spec for, for these 10 millimeters, something like six foot pounds, nothing crazy. Uh, it's just going into cast aluminum. And as you may notice, uh, we do include a shield for the ball joint. So this is covering the ball joint from all the heat that the uh, rotor has on it. All right, so that's installed and then we can, like I said, install the silicon hose onto the carbon duct. And there you have it. The uh, hose is basically installed. And uh, at this point, you probably wanna make sure that the car's uh, suspension can fully articulate without pulling off the rubber hose or binding on anything important. Always a good idea to do that type of stuff. All right, so everything has been installed. Clamp is tight right there. And then we installed a zip tie to kind of help the hose stay in line with the brake duct. Um, the zip tie is kind of not super tight, but pretty nice. Um, we do include those with the kit as well. All right guys, so basically to wrap up the install, you reinstall the rotor with the six millimeter nut, and then you reinstall the two E16 bolts in the back of the caliper, and I will throw up the torque spec from OEM in the video. And then the install is basically done. Throw on the bolt, torque the spec. Make sure that the, the hose is not getting caught on anything when you go lock to lock as far as turning is concerned and do as best you can as far as suspension droop. Droop is easy, that's in the air, um, but full compression, but you shouldn't have an issue there. Um, we've done a decent bit of testing. I did actually do um, a quick little test fit with our uh, Essex AP Radical setup and uh, both the caliper and the 
uh, rotor. Both fit with the backing plate, so super thrilled about that and can't wait to get that kit on um, after we finish up doing some testing on the factory stuff. All right, guys, that concludes the install of our brake cooling kit for the Mark V Supra. Really excited to get this car on track this year and do some testing, with further testing, I guess, with uh, more aero, more tire, more brakes, and more cooling. Um, the car is really capable in factory form, but I think we've really took it up a notch, and I'm really excited to see what Dan Clark can do, as well as what some other driver drivers, including myself, can do with the car. Uh, with some better rubber than factory because at, at this point I think the factory rubber is really holding us back as far as lap times and uh, I'm really excited to see what we can do with a bit better rubber, better brakes, and uh, maybe some suspension later on in the year. If you want to hear or see us do anything with our Mark V Supra, GT350R, if you have any product suggestions, let us know and we are happy to potentially help you guys out. Um, yeah. Looking forward to doing the testing on the brake cooling kit too as well. Um, I think we'll probably do some back-to-back -back testing here in the next few weeks or months depending on the weather. Till next time.